Welcome to the Red VTV Not So Instant Reaction, supported by Chapel House Cars for the 2024 season, following St. Helens' 12 points to 4 victory over Wigan in the 2024. Good Friday derby, now with added sound. <laughs> oh, what a shame. What a shame yeah. that this wasn't great. I, I did write immediately. The sound's terrible. And we've got a load of people saying, we can't hear you, please re-record. <laughs> well, if we'd have lost, there's absolutely no way we would be sat here doing this again. <laughs> Correct. Absolutely But we did, right. so we're quite willing to uh, have a chat once again. Um, thanks for all the the tech advice, but all that needed to be done was actually make sure the mic was plugged in properly. <laughs> <laughs> once again, once again, it's foiled us. A Good Friday reaction video was always somehow descending to just like beautiful chaos. Yes. Uh, so Easter not... Saturday it is. What a glorious Easter weekend it is, Kevin. Um, are you feeling fresh this morning? I'm actually not feeling bad this morning. Um, yeah. Drink had uh, obviously been taken yesterday. Um, don't know if my me, me voice might sound a little bit croakier and deeper than than usual. I'm not, not entirely sure, but... Three is how I would describe it, Kevin. Sultry. I'll take that. Uh, but yeah, absolutely feel fine. What a day. Um, I think from a personal point of view, um, with our mates that we were out with, um, are we going to, in, in that, that bunch, uh, I think we had a cracking day, even take the results out of it. Um, absolutely tremendous. How a good Friday should be. Yes. Um and I did tweet it yesterday, special shout out to the Glass House yesterday for thinking ahead, putting 10 million staff on, ensuring yeah. everybody could get saved as quick as they, as they possibly could. Um, I know there has been occasions where we've been to Wigan for a few and it, they've somehow been shocked that 4,000, 5,000 Saints fans have descended on the town centre and want to be here. Um, but yeah, tremendous. Um, and thus, we went in the Swan afterwards, didn't we? Um, yeah. He had a, a live act on after the game. Everybody enjoying the, I want to say the festivities um, or the hospitality. Yeah. Um, really good bouncing atmosphere in there and a real shame that that pub won't be with us for much longer um, with the town being developed. But hopefully um, the landlord, landlady, the staff can find somewhere close by and, and bring the atmosphere there with them. Yeah, fingers crossed. It was, uh, as I say, from a personal point of view, it was a great evening as well. Um, great pub. Seemed like everybody was enjoying themselves, no matter which. I know we're Saints and Wigan's fan, fans mixing in that as well. Um, and it's good to see. It's good to see that after the game, you can have a little chat about it. We always say we don't debrief for too long with the um, with what happened with our our friends. You have like a little window to talk about the game, and then it's. Let's just carry on doing what we're doing. Yes. Uh, right, let's get on to the day itself. Um, first of all, Saints got pretty much spot on. Um, they did the, the walk with the players up to the ground. It looked like there was a healthy number of fans outside to, to welcome them in. Um, JJ's Ices did a roaring trade. It looked like a Wembley ticket queue from back in the day. With the amount <laughs> of people in that line. Um and my little girl said it was the best ice cream she's ever had. And to be fair, I finished it off for it, and I wholeheartedly agree. <laughs> um, but yeah, obviously from outside the ground, when you got in the ground, it helped everybody. I'd had a bit of a drink. Um, but the, the DJ, Eric McKenna, Jack Bennett leading the crowd in what was basically a 5,000-strong West End karaoke. Um, it just got everybody up for the game, didn't it? It did, it did. As you say, they got it right. Um, and the club get an awful lot right. There's not very much they get wrong. And and I know sometimes we can highlight stuff that we don't necessarily like, but this is something that the vast majority of people are going to give them big raps for, and rightfully so. They, they've they made it. I know it's an event anyway, but they've made it even more so. Just the little points of difference, having JJ's ices outside, having the match ball delivered by the, the Marines, was it? I'm sailing off the roof. Just somebody, little... somebody said, sorry, somebody next to us in the West End said, imagine if they abseiled down and they forgot the ball. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> oh, I've got to go back up for it. Like, yeah. <laughs> so, but, oh, one of the fellas just always sort of throw it down. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, but it, they've done it absolutely right, and the 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 club deserve the pat on the back for it. I think uh, the big issue is when you you have an event like that. And, <laughs> You can't keep replicating Good Fridays. You can't keep replicating derbies. But that's what the game needs to kind of do. Make it so there is an event that there are people wanting to spend their hard-earned money getting into the ground, getting to the ground, going into the club shop, spending on food, drink, whatever, and getting people through them turnstiles. So for a derby day game, they have got that absolutely Absolutely right and well done too. Okay. Um now we'll get on to the team then. Um so Paul Wellens selects a back line of Tommy Makinson, Conrad Harrell, um John Benison, and Matt Percival. I don't remember that then. Or struggle for a second. <laughs> um and Wonga Blake misses out. Now, we discussed it on the preview show last week, and I said, based on form, that is the back line I'd have chosen. Uh, I'd have left Wonga Blake out. And I actually said, I don't think that will happen, though, just based on Wonga being the overseas big money flash signing. Uh, but on form, for me, although he's not done very much wrong, on form, he'd be the player to miss out. And I, but I didn't think he, he would. But then Paul Wellens has shown he's got actually, well, he's got the balls to do it. Yeah, it's interesting, obviously, because we we're not that instant here. Been able to read some of the the post match stuff, and Paul's well said that um, Wong has had a bit of a, a unstructured week with training. I think he, he's had a little bit of he must have had a little bit of problems in training during the week. Possibly makes his decision a bit easier, but. As you say, the fact that he is just picking and not going, right, you might have had that that week that's been broken up a little bit. It's not been quite right for training for you for whatever reason. I'm still going to throw you in. And he's picked what you would say is the form player on that left wing. Because I think pretty much the others kind of pick themselves. I know we had the debate over whether... Um, Connie play, you might play Blake in the centre, etc, etc but with, with John Benison being the form player on that left wing to show that he's got the, the the guts to do it on such a big day and then gets vindicated for that decision because we mentioned it yesterday if you could hear it on the sound that there was only one mistake John Benison made and it didn't matter anyway because Wigan were offside from the kick where he's let that ball bounce after that, absolutely imperious under the high ball. Absolutely wonderful under the high ball. You know when Wonga Blake plays, we're, we're, we're constantly switching in between centre or winger, depending on the combinations. I'd like to say now that your first choice wingers are Tommy Makinson and John Benison. And if Wonga plays, he plays as a centre. And therefore, yeah. he therefore he's competing with Percival Harrell. Yes, for, yeah, he for, probably for, for a centre back rather than trying to shoehorn players into teams. Um, I did see a post yesterday after game saying like, "Well, where does Wonga Blake go from here? Nowhere. He, we need a squad. Um, he works hard in training. He performs, and players form at some point during the year will dip, and you get back in the team. Uh, or HIA's happen. Um, yeah. players miss out. So." Mark Percival fails at HIA yesterday, which we'll get onto later on. But that means he won't play at Catalan next week. And Wonga Blake will come in and he'll have a chance to stake his claim. And what should happen there is, if he performs against Catalan really well, then again, if then it becomes his share to lose. And unfortunately, I, I, we don't like players losing the place due to injury or anything else. But it's Wonga's job to try and keep Percy out of the team. It or it's a, yeah, or Harrell. That's it, and that's what he needs to do. Um, you, there's not too much more to add to that because uh, I am in agreement with you that you're gonna end up swapping and changing throughout the year. Um, it's not ideal that Blake's played wing centre, wing centre, missed out, whatever, 
and add different partners on the wing and in the centre. It's not ideal at all. <sighs> but it's something that he's just going to have to get used to. And once he gets that chance, he's got to try and hit the ground running as much as he can. I'm not saying that he's going to turn into a Jamie Lyon, a Matt Gidley, a Paul Newlove, someone like that. But he's got to give Paul Wellens the, the headache of, I've got to find space for this lad in my team. What am I going to do? Who am I going to have to leave out? He's, his problem there is, obviously, all the other lads are going, I need a place in this team. So John Benison, as I say, and uh, I know we keep mentioning him because there's always a lot of chatter on social media about that left wing. But John Benison is arguably the form player in that back line. In the centres and wingers, John Benison's arguably the form player. He's not getting dropped at the minute. I shouldn't. No. I think it'd be very, very harsh. Tommy Makinson might have credits in the bank. Percy might have credits in the bank. Collies might have credits in the bank. Doesn't necessarily stop you from being dropped if you're, if you're not doing the right things. And that doesn't necessarily mean on-field. It means off-field too. It, it, it's just how it works that every so often you'll have a player who makes a slip physically or metaphorically and they end up out of the team for a little bit and somebody else gets the chance. Um, again, we, T. Ritson, um, when he's played, he hasn't shown enough in the first team. And listen, he hasn't had loads of chances, but shown enough to make it difficult for, for Paul Wellens to pick John Benison ahead of him. Um, John Benison, safe as houses under the under the high bomb yesterday, made a couple of good breaks. Um, he's just a very safe player. Listen, yeah. he, he, is he got is he got X factor? Maybe not, but. In a in a oh defensively spot on, it was it was spot on all game. Um, Conrad Harrell fully justified his place in, as well with the the try at the end. His carries out, um, and I think it's fair to say that Wello got it right with his backline. Yeah, definitely. Um, I, I don't think there can be too many arguments. As I say with T. Ritson, T. doesn't need all the chatter of people saying he should be in, he should be in, he should be in, and putting that pressure and pressure on. He'll get his chance. He will get his chance at some point. Um, and when that happens, good luck to him. And hopefully he then causes another problem for Wello. Yeah, right. Forwards. The other big call yesterday was George Delaney missing out on the squad. Um, again, something we called on the previous show um, that we felt, or I felt George Delaney would miss out. Um, a tough call again. George Delaney done absolutely nothing wrong. He's going to be at this club, hopefully, for as long as we can keep him. Um, but again, Wellens was fully justified and vindicated with his team selection yesterday with that. Yeah, I think so. I, I think the easy thing to do is just say Delaney should play every single week. And he'll be disappointed and it'll hurt that he's missed out on that big occasion and it just make him hungrier to get back in, whether that's against Catalan or further down the line, Warrington Cup game, hold something like that. It will make him hungrier to get in. But he's a young prop. I said this, and I, I'll keep banging on about it, mainly because I'm right, because if I was wrong, I, I probably wouldn't mention it again. But in his play preview at the start of the year, I said that we need to manage his minutes. Because you can't just have a player coming in, playing 40-minute stints at such a young age. And then once he gets to 23, we don't see him again because he's burnt out. You've got to build him into Super League. Yeah, he had a great year last year and he had to play because we were just down on numbers. And he, he deserved to play as well. I'll, I'll, I'll add that. But this year, while we've got the options, while we've got the likes of Jake Wingfield back, who again was exceptional yesterday, while we've got Sione who can play as a mobile middle, why not take that chance now when you've got the bodies to give him that rest? Because second half of the season, yet yeah, Iggy Pars is due back. Don't know how he's going to go, whether he might come back in, maybe drop out for a week or two and they keep on rotating him and George just to get Iggy back up to full fitness. Whatever happens in that second half of the season, we might need George an awful lot more. And it's just gonna we'll we'll reap the benefits from taking it easy with him now. Yeah, and he's a young lad, and obviously the way Wigan headhunt, it was a chance just to protect his young head. Yes. Right, on to the game then itself. Um 
what a game. Um, we, we came away from that yesterday saying if you could watch that them two teams fight it out every single day of the week, you would. Um, just tremendous. And do you know what? You probably wouldn't get the same result twice um, because we've come away with the spoils yesterday. They're more than capable of getting a victory. It's just an almighty ding-dong. And if that's not the grand final at the end of the year, something somewhere has gone seriously wrong. Yeah, for one of them teams. I think it's that's it. It's a Liam Byrne tackling technique away from potentially us not having them last two tries. May have got one. Ended up, ended up completely different and the game becomes really tit for tat in the last 10 minutes. Who knows? But you're right. I would quite happily watch that type of game, that type of it is on a knife edge throughout. I will watch that 27, 30 weeks of the year and not know how the result's going to go. And as you say, we watch them two again. If they them two are playing again in the same intensity game next week, would it surprise you if it finished 24 12 to Wigan? Would it surprise you if we won a yes. game? Yes, uh, because def- <laughs> because both defences are that good. Okay, then. So if it finished like 18 6, or if it finished 12 4, Wigan. 4, yeah. If it finished 4 2, would it surprise you? Absolutely not. Because them, those two teams we watched yesterday were absolutely at the top of the game. And we spoke to Wigan fans, if you've been able to listen to, uh, Red V, we spoke to Wigan fans right at the end of the, the instant reaction and they were saying pretty much exactly the same, what a game that was. Yeah, it's for me that's probably as close to state of origin type intensity that you're going to get over here. Um, and I've, I think I said to you after about 25 minutes of the game that I almost felt literally one try could win that game, Yeah, the way the defences were on top. Um First half, very little in it. Um, we take the two, take a penalty, got to take the lead. Um, and then Tyler Dupree and the decision to not send him off. Um, and I felt at the time that the officials bottled it um, and he should have gone. Um, whether it was the point in the game it was at that they didn't want to do it at that point. But how can you have a player use that technique, connect with the head and it not be read. And I know they've given the mitigation, they, they, they say it came off the chest first. But if the RFL are intent on protecting players from head injuries, then that's got to be a red. Um, just for, It was forceful. It's caused, um, it's caused significant contact with the head. It's just it's it's a red all day for me, um, and if you're one of the players who were involved against the RFL with litigation at the moment, you're handing a copy of that clip over to your legal team and going, well, they're obviously not um, bothered because they're only giving that as a yellow. Yeah, um, I think the mitigation is the one that that obviously saves him um, with it coming up off the chest. I get what you're saying because. My mind goes back to when Kyler Moore got sent off at Wigan and his hit came up off the ball and hit the head. I think it was Ben Thaler sent him off. Um, I think it is only the mitigation that he's running and he's he's not aiming for the head. He's aiming for the chest and it's come up. And that's, that is what saves him. I think if he goes for the head, as we'll speak about the other incident, um, there would be no mitigating factor. Now, it depends on what the MRP now do with it. Um, whether they say, well, yeah, there is contact with the head, so we are going to sit you down for a couple of weeks. Um, that remains to be seen when we find out which. You've still that's... got you've still got a duty of care though, haven't you, to make sure you don't yeah. connect with the head. So it's still got to be at least a couple of games. Um, that could have been a decision that cost us the game. Luckily, it didn't. Um. So he sees yellow for that. We'll talk about we'll, we'll before we go to the, the rest of the second half. We'll talk about Liam Burns one. Liam Byrne looks like he's tried to wrap, but yeah, you've got to adjust for the attacker. That's what the rule is, and he's connected head for he's connected with the head. I'd have been more happy if that was a yellow though, and Dupree's have been a red. I think the cards were the wrong way round. I I wouldn't because that would have then shown a lot more. Um... 
inconsistency because I think you see the Percy one against Salford and that's given us a red. So Burns has got to be given us a red. I think, listen, back in the day, that was just a big hit. It was just a massive hit that, unfortunately, Percy gets the head knocked from. Um, but I think as the rules currently stand, he had to walk. He, so, he had Wigan, to walk. so should Wigan have been naturally down to 11 then, Kev? You you could argue that. You could absolutely argue that. So could you argue that Chris Kendall saved Wigan? No, because we still won. Saved them from a bigger defeat. <laughs> um, okay, He's second half then. The down. Is that Ronnie? He's trying to keep the score down. Uh, <laughs> second half, again, defence is well on top. I almost felt like Wigan, that second half, Wigan got more territory and pinned us back a little bit more and the opening 20 minutes of that half was Wigan's. Um, but again, it was always... It was going to take some individual brilliance to to break the deadlock, and it was Bevan French who did that. I don't think he got the ball down, but when it gets sent up as a try, the video isn't clear enough, even in slow motion, to be able to define whether that ball bounces or not. And if it's up as a try, it's going to stay as a try. At full speed, it looks like he bounces it. But again, if that's the other way around, do you want to give him? Of course you do. Of course you do. Yeah, absolutely. I think... That's it. We're going to score off a, a great bit of play. Whether it could have been stopped, it's easy to say. Ah, you just need to get your body in the way there. But when you're all turning and you've got someone who is who's got a set of wheels on him going past you, that's easier said than done. Um, I had no problem at the time. I've, I've actually not seen the French try back. I've not looked for it. Um, but at the time, I said I had no problem with it. Because I think the magnanimous part of me thinks, well, if we get one like that in a bit, I'm hoping that that gets given uh, in the same way. I, I genuinely have no problem with it. And I think like yesterday um, on the instant reaction, you scoffed when I said it was a game of two halves. Um, but that's exactly what it was. We were. We, I thought that the fact that we hadn't turned all that territory and possession into more points in the first half was going to see us on the wrong side of a, a result there. And then in the second half, Wigan kind of threw wave on wave. And it's testament to our defence that the way that Wigan scored was off a one-man bit of brilliance. Uh, and I've seen a couple of um, uh, scores in a Wigan paper today, uh, giving, giving their teammates. I mean, yeah, defensively, fair enough. But going forward... If you only score off one bit of brilliance and you've been beaten in the game, I don't see how you give eights and nines out. Mm. That's that's a personal opinion, just because I do scores for a for someone, and I I'm, I think I'm more realistic with it. Uh, I thought the intensity was that high, and was it was there attacks were poor yesterday, or was it just are the defenses just that good? Yeah, arguably, arguably. But I suppose that's just opinion, and it's just my opinion. I wouldn't have been given eight to nines out if we'd have got beat yesterday. So what you're saying is your play rating is based on the results? Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> that's how that's how I start it. Who's been man of the match? And everybody gets marked based on man of the match and the results. Um, we can go down to I'm 12. Harsh, I'm a harsh taskmaster, Dave, when it comes to it. <laughs> I'm a harsh that and I've been told that. We can go down to 12 um, and we get that little bit of a foothold and eventually the pressure tells. Um, and it was a great pick by Lewis Dodd. Um, pinpoint, dropped it on a, on a sixpence and Tommy Makinson leaps like a salmon. Lovely. To get the ball and put it down over the line and give the Saints the lead. Um, but even at that point, Lomax misses the kick and it's still game on, isn't it? Yeah. It is. And I think you're right to pick out the fact that Lewis Dodd going back down that blind side, but putting a kick that we can chase and we won it, but we can at least compete for, was the right move. Obviously, it was the right move, vindicated with his decision, with the fact that Tommy Makinson comes down and plonks the ball down in front of an absolute jubilant West stand. Um, and yet, it is still game on. It is still game on at that point, and still you can you can't say that Wigan can't get that one score to 
to turn the game round because they're, they're just still in that fight. Yeah. And then we obviously you get the moments, pretty much last play of the game. Connie bulldozes, turns the body, twists over the line, puts the ball down. West Stand in raptures, bouncing everywhere. Super Mikey Rush bouncing on the balcony, showing just what it means to the fan up to the CEO in this town to get the victory in the derby. Yeah, I think when you've got Connie that far out from the line and you're not putting him on the ground, you're keeping him upright. That is cardinal sin number one when it comes with Connie because he's just going to keep them legs driving towards that line and he knows he knows where that's at. He knows I'm 10 metres out. I can, I can easily take two or three of them with me here and get over that line. Um, yeah, it was. I, I, I noticed at the, on a couple of old posts, the old celebration police were out, like, oh, you're celebrating like you've won the final. What can you not celebrate the win these days? Has it got to be done a certain way? Do one. If you're not going to celebrate beating Wigan on a good Friday, in a good Friday derby, yeah, exactly. It's, it's don't almost buy, like don't buy a ticket, stay at home. Well, it's almost like the, the Wigan fans who put that, I'd imagine don't go to the stadium for a start. Um, but what would they have done? All just stood in the East and going, oh, oh, well played, well played. Oh, if, it been, if it had been 6 4 and Wigan would have um, gone and got a winner, there would have been limbs everywhere. Of course, would. Of course, would. And rightly, so. All, and rightly yeah. so. Yeah, it wouldn't have all been uh, teacups and rounds of applause, would it? No. Right. Um, Notable performances from Saints. Morgan Knowles was superb. I thought Alex Walmsley, over the last two games, has had his best two games of the year. Yeah. Um, you could pick out everyone. I thought we were just tremendous across the board. You could. Um, I think Matty Lees and Morgan Knowles always get wraps off Paul Wellens for doing a lot of the hard stuff. And not necessarily making big metres, but taking the carries in, taking the tough carries in that they need to, which then gives us a platform and gives Alex that platform later in the game when you've got tired forwards who have been uh, to deal with Matty Lees and Morgan Knowles, not only running at them, but tackling them like machines. It gives him that platform. That's the, And that's how your forward pack works. As we say, we've mentioned John Benison already. I thought he was absolutely fantastic, save that one error that didn't matter in the end. I thought he was tremendous. Obviously, you see what that try means to Tommy as well, when he uh, gets over and plonks it down in front of the West Stand. But you're right, you could go through it and say, Dal Clark was sharp at uh, dummy half and nothing really changed in that respect when Moses came on. Um, Halfbacks got us around the pitch, maybe you might have a little slight criticism that maybe they got caught too often on the ball. And I think the only criticism across the team is we've possibly coughed up ball a little bit too much. But I'm not I'm not saying no one, like, oh, yeah, well, I'm picking on the halfbacks this week. I think that they were great. Because you know what? They were. They've got us across the line. They've made those opportunities for us. So, yeah, I would give eights and nines for, for that because we won the game. Okay, right. And then we've all come away happy. And do you know what? The thing I noticed about the town centre yesterday after the game was just the feeling of like there was a happy feeling. Yeah. And, and it just shows how much an influence that this club have on the town. Um, yeah. Just like, there was just a really good party-like atmosphere everywhere you went and everybody you've seen. Everybody's just in a good mood, sets up Easter nicely. Um and yeah, just a real all round good day, finished off by a lovely Indian at Barbersi. Yes, very much so. But you're right, and it, 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 you know what? It's not just it's not just locals who were feeling good. Like yeah, Wiganers have been hurting with that result, but they're part of that atmosphere that was in town after. Yeah, um, and I think the club gets it. I think a, a couple of years ago. The club maybe hadn't got quite got that connect. And then over the past six, seven years or so, it has come back with effect. A properly good, good work from the club to make sure that they are 
integral to this town. Um, and as you say, it, it's hopefully the result has helped a couple of uh, hostelries, restaurants, cafes and whatever. Take a bit, good bit of cash over this Easter weekend. Yeah. And I'll tell you what, JJ's ices will be absolutely brewsted <laughs> after that <laughs> yesterday. Have like, a good on the fella. Yeah, fair, I was going to say, he's found an absolute niche yeah. and, and absolutely nailed it. Um, yeah. Yeah, right. Done and dusted. Glad Excellent. you can hear us. Yeah, well, you might not be. <laughs> might have preferred the, the old silent uh, one. And the one thing I will say is if Wigan have got any sense at all, they will have the July derby on sale as soon as possible. Strike yeah. while the iron is hot because that should be another sellout. I know it's, I know it's not good Friday and... The other derbies usually get about 19, 20,000 maybe, but that game deserves another sellout. It does, it does. And it's two teams who are right at the top of the game at the moment. Um, and yeah, I'm looking forward to, to heading over there uh, in July. Can't wait for it. Do we play them at home or is it, or is, is it magic? Magic's after that, isn't it? Is it August? Yes. Yeah, magic. Hopefully all the other teams in Super League will want to watch two good teams and might come down to Magic to watch us two then. Why not? Yeah. Right. Done and dusted. Right, Kev, catch you during the week for the Red VTV show. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. And I'm also going to put onto YouTube the bounce that I've shared on Twitter yesterday as well. Good stuff. Catch you soon. Cheers.